Um, thank you very much, Janice um, Kennedy, uh, for, for coming to us. I know you are an expert in heritage interpretation, and I really wish we had an extra panel just on this. It's a fascinating um, um, area. And um, I'm looking forward to your presentation now. <laughs> well, hello to everyone. I have, I want to thank you so much for having me. And I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed looking at the fabulous pictures and places and all the objects. They're beautiful. Um, and so that's been a great privilege, and I appreciate that. Um, I am an interpreter first, uh, supervisor of the Peyton Randolph House in the historic uh, Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. And so we set on over 363 plus acres. We are a city within a city or a town within a town. And we are a historic capital city that's been restored. Um, and so we have over 500 buildings. Uh, the Peyton Randolph that I'm going to show you is one of them. And the Peyton Randolph is a very important building. It's a small ecosystem within itself that is original. There are portions of this house that are going to date back to 1717 and portions that have been uh, added on to in 1754 when Peyton Randall was actually here and inherited the house from his mother's will. And so he modified the house for his family. Peyton Randolph is a man who was cousin to Thomas Jefferson. He was one of the speakers of the House of Burgesses and thought of as the very first president of our Continental Congress. So if I could get someone to pull up um, my PowerPoint, um, which is called the concept, well, it's actually called Colonial Williamsburg, the art of self um, curation. And it, though it's a little different from what you all presented, um, I think is worthwhile talking about. Um, we curate our society, we curate our lives. And so I don't expect any answers, but I asked my question when I was trying to think of something to present to you all, curating or what is it to curate? Um, a curator, what does that person do? What's their role? And if something's been curated, what does that mean? And I looked up Miriam, Miriam Webster's um, dictionary meaning, and it's like, mm, that wasn't quite what I was looking for, but it was something to work with. And I won't insult you all by explaining to you what I think a curator is, but I will certainly try to tell you how I connected to what I do here as a supervisor, not only the Peyton Randolph House, but a historic area supervisor. Uh, if you've never been here before, as I said, we're a historical museum and we have over 500 buildings. And it's, um, it's, what we do here is we try to create the past, make it relevant to the future um, in the present. And so uh, what I wanna do is show you the Peyton Randolph House through, through a few slides and then maybe go through an exercise with you all. You don't have to actually participate, but just walk through it with me. And then if you have questions, I'll be happy to address them afterwards. Uh, so I'll start with the first slide, the concept of curation. What does it mean to curate? How do we define a curating? Now, how do I define it? Next slide, please. Our goal for today to break down the following. What we know, what we actively don't know. And you might ask, how can you actually not know something? I'll leave that for you to think about. What does it mean and how can I actively not know something? So that should be the critical thinking point. Next slide, please. We're going to do this exercise as we walk through the Peyton Randolph house. The hidden narrative and the story I see. If you were to take a piece of paper and split it in half, title one side, the hidden narrative. And the other side, the story I see. As we look at these next slides of the Peyton Randolph House, pay close attention and write down any observations on one side or the other of the page, either under the hidden narrative side or the story I see. Next slide. Welcome to the Peyton Randolph House. This house sits on the Nicholson Street, which is a back street from the main street to Duke of Gloucester in Colonial Williamsburg. You're seeing the front frontal view and a portion of the back as well. This house sits on four and a half to five acres of property. Peyton Randolph has outbuildings that sit directly behind the back that you'll see in the courtyard. And those outbuildings support this main house. This house from the front door, which is a nine and a half foot black walnut panel door that you're seeing from the outside, is facing the county court. To the right, you see a section of the house as well. Um, 
which is the main section that was there when the house was first put there in 1717. Peyton Randolph comes here as a young boy in 1724, about the age of three to four years of age. Next slide, please. This is the courtyard. This is the back of the house. And so if you were to look here at the very top, you see the windows, the roof, and here's this uh, compass window. This type of window we have here in the city, you would see it very visible in the College of William and Mary, which is to the west end of town. You would see it at the county court, which is directly across from this building at the front. You would see it on the east end of town at the Capitol, which is the government building. You would see it in Bruton Parish Church, which at that time the church was a government building as well. And so the presence of these windows are in all our government buildings. And by the way, our government buildings are all brick. It's amazing that Peyton Randolph took the time to put a compass window in his house and not on the front, but toward the back of the property. Over here, we have the breezeway. This breezeway was added on uh, or restored in the year 2000 or by the year 2000. It connects the main house, your living and social space to the outbuildings that you would see some here in this side view, this photograph here. These are outbuildings or the uh, outhouses that the labor would live in and work in. So these buildings, this is where the, the intense labor work is done, provided for by those folks serving out here. And this keeps this building here afloat. So all of this is the back area of the house. And this extensive courtyard is covered in shells. We sit between two rivers, the James and the York. And so a lot of the courtyard is just oyster and clam shells that we pulled up from the nearby waters. This breezeway allows Mrs. Randolph, Peyton Randolph's wife, and those within to travel to the outside buildings that connect this main house. You have two worlds here and you have two families here. The Randolphs, Peyton and Elizabeth Randolph, and 27 of the 109 enslaved people that he has working for him on this property. So 27 people pass through, will, will pass through this connecting piece here to these outbuildings in the side photo. Next slide, please. This is the opposite side of that front door. It's amazing. You have the, the, uh, the reddish brown paint on the outside, but on the inside, you see the beautiful black walnut paneling. This is a nine and a half foot door. So you can imagine what the feeling is for someone who's being invited into this home to walk in a door that, this that is this tall. This is not a normal door. This is a thing of great uh, presence. These houses are sites of memory, and this door creates an image for all those who enter. The Randolphs represent the gentry class in this town. The time period that we're talking about uh, would be in the 18th century. And so the Randolphs are here in the 70, middle 1700s. They are 2% of the town's population, a town of less than 2,000 people, where 2% are the gentry, those who own large homes, large tracts of land, and sit near government offices. So imagine this door being open and you're invited in and you come in and in this room, you see the broken pedestals here on the wall, uh, the, the uh, imported wallpaper, the grand stairway here. You see paneling at the bottom that's been painted in a beautiful blue with hand carved inlay. Over here to the right, the upper right, you'll see uh, a visual of the staircase from the second floor. And it starts here at the bottom and leads up and winds around. Here's that comp the, I'm sorry, the compass window that we saw outside. And if you look closely, you can see the outside of the courtyard. So you could imagine Mrs. Randolph being able to stand here at this window and see what's going on in her courtyard. The outbuildings, the workers, this is the perfect view. She would never have to leave her, leave her home, but she could see what was going on. But the opposite of that is those on the outside can see that they're being watched as well. Smart move. Next slide, please. Here's another visual of the doorway and the stairwell. This is the regular door that I say for the normal folks, or the regular folks. It's directly across from what would have been that nine and a half foot black walnut panel door on the opposite side of the room. So this is like a hallway or a foyer that allows folks to come in, <clears throat> excuse me, or a waiting area. And to the right here would be the entrance to the dining room, to the left here a parlor, a place to parlay and chit chat. 
This is the morning sunlight. I want you to see what that looked like. Maybe this is the way it looked when Mrs. Randolph was here and what her guests would see as well. And if you go across this little hallway here and go on up to the staircase, you go to the second floor and that's where you find the bed chambers. But again, on the right here, we have a visual of the courtyard um, and those outbuildings. Next slide, please. There you have the Randolphs. This is the parlor, a place to parlay and chit chat. No sofas, but chairs, lots of chairs, beautiful carpets on the floor, imported carpets, uh, beautiful blue pa uh, paint on the wall paneling, walnut, as I said, with hand carved inlay. There, in this room, you don't see it just yet, but there is a fireplace with imported Italian marble in the surround, beveled mirrors that were encased in gold, um, also porcelain figurines that were imports. So obviously they have traveled around the world and they're being influenced by the porcelain and the Asian uh, artwork that they see there as well, and glassware. Here you have Peyton and Elizabeth Randolph. So if you look at the detail, the size of their portraits, how finely they're dressed, what they're wearing, how their hair is coughed and pulled back, and the velvet suede sheen to, the, to their, their clothes, and the silk and satin finish to her outfit as well, it, it points to a detail of wealth and status and power. Over here, we have the dining room, which is directly across from the parlor. And so you'll see that there's several mirrors here that, as I was speaking about, that are beveled and encased in gold. This one being an original that dates back to the time period when the Randolphs were here. We have a carpet on the floor that was not original to this property, but original to the time period. Up here on this wall, you don't see them uh, very clearly, but that is William and Mary Isham Randolph. They were Peyton Randolph's grandparents. Thomas Jefferson's great grandparents. And so in this room, you have their fine linens, um, the carpets with imported marble in the surround of the fireplace. We have marble tables or marble side top tables. So in this room is where they would do a lot of politicking and fine dinners and entertain the elite folks here in this capital city. And this is a place where Peyton Randolph did a lot of business uh, dealings as well. Down here, totally out of place, but here anyhow, here is a uh, shot of the bedchamber above stairs in Peyton Randolph's master bedchamber. That's where you would have found the bed furnishings and furniture for Mr. and Mrs. Randolph. And at the time of the inventory, when we reset this house, we're using inventory that was taken when Mrs. Randolph passed away. She lived eight years beyond her husband at the age of about 63. And we found at that time that she passed away, there were two beds in this chamber. We don't particularly know why. The bed furnishings, are as valuable or more valuable than the actual furniture itself. Over here in the corner, there would be, uh, you see the opening to a closet where a lot of their fine clothing and accessories were stored as well. Over here, there's the hint of a wig that Mrs. Randolph would have worn sitting on her dresser, which is outlined in lace and ruffles. Carpets on the floor. Next slide, please. This is a slide of um, the, ch the chimney mirror that's encased in gold. Here are the fine imported porcelain figurines. And this is a parlor shot. Um, there's more than one room that can be used as a parlor in this house. This one is below stairs. We have heat shields for the fireplace. If you were sitting here or Mrs. Randall was here taking tea, we assume that these heat shields would have been turned to deflect the heat away from her and toward the room if she was just a little too warm. And as I said, the fireplace is on the inside of the house burn coal, it puts out a better source of heat, but you can imagine the dust that would have settled in the hand carved inlay. And think about how this would have had been clean on a day-to-day -day basis. This house, the Randolph house, sits around the corner to the north side of town, and that's where we found the governor's palace as well. Another visual of Mrs. Randolph here. This is the, the uh, I'm sorry, the entrance to the dining room and the parlor right here. I want you to see how they were connected and close um, a range of clothes from each other, across from each other. Below here, this is the entrance of the breezeway. The Randolphs are the only one to have a breezeway at this time, and it connects the inside world to the outside world. So this door here that doesn't look like very much that's whitewashed, and the room is whitewashed. However, there are windows here. You can see that there is a spinning wheel. If someone had to do work here and didn't have a place or the weather was bad outside, this space could be used as a work area or as a place for people to come and uh, make entrance here and go into the courtyard uh, to, to the outbuildings to do work. But right here, this door 
changes because if we were to open this door towards us now, that beautiful blue that's here would be reflected on the other side of this door and a little paint makes a lot of difference. This door is the entrance to the room that I call Mrs. Randolph's um, Command Central. It's a space that's centered in the middle of her house and it has four doors and it allows her to enter uh, or access any portion of her house. So that's where she runs her house from the room on the opposite side of this door. Next slide, please. This is our kitchen. This is an 18th century kitchen. And this kitchen is second only to the governor's palace kitchen. Uh, Peyton Randolph is not nobility like the governor who represents the king or queen, but he is one of the most prominent families here in Williamsburg at that time. And there's still Randolphs here in the capital city of Williamsburg or in Williamsburg. Uh, here you see fine copperware. If you're familiar with cooking, copper is a fine distributor of heat. And so that's excellent to have in your kitchen. We've got pewterware over here. We've got uh, the jars for storing goods, more copper down here, um, copper on the table. We've got the dinnerware here for serving or for plating things. And so this kitchen, as I said, is second only to the Governor's Palace kitchen. This kitchen is used to prepare meals for folks coming to visit the Randolphs and for 27 enslaved folks who are gonna be on this property as well. There's a, a fireplace in all of the rooms or in the outbuildings. These fireplaces do not burn coal as the main house does, but they run off of wood. And so Peyton Randolph's gonna have wood brought in from his outlying properties um, as well. Over here, we've got a visual of the laundry room. But this is not just a room that, or space that's set up to be, do laundry. It can also be used as a scullery to skin, gut, pluck, scrape, to prep things, like a prep kitchen for things that are going to be finished off in the main kitchen here. So if this kitchen here, the main one, does not allow enough space to prepare all the dishes that the cook would need to prepare for that evening's festivities, there is a, an additional fireplace in all of the additional rooms. Sewing is done here. Sometimes you find equipment that represents dipping and molding of candles. Uh, all of that can be done in these spaces. So this is a multi-purpose space here. Next slide. This room here that looks unfinished, not pla no plaster, uh, not very posh, not very warm, not very inviting. This room here is a gathering space. And this is a corner of this room. So I provide you with sections and different um, views of it. This is where you would find the enslaved folks that are on this property who do not go into the main house, who are not working and living in the outbuildings. So this would be considered a quarter here in the city. Anywhere where enslaved folks are living and working can be considered a quarter. You're in the capital city and we wouldn't have the rough looking uh, slave quarters that you would find in the rural areas. So here you have some things here that represent the activities and the people that would have been in this space. Over here, you have what seems to be a, a bed. You wouldn't find these for everybody or fortunately find these in these rooms all the time. We just happen to have this one here. So imagine someone with the skills on um, being able to find the wood to make a bed or put it here as a place to honor the elder on this property. Another fireplace to cook meals, to warm by, to have the light for warmth and to see, and some personal Put This here to compare, I'm sorry, the Peyton Randolph main kitchen. This one, there's a and this one here. I'll check and spit palace or even and this would allow you to cook large on these end irons and rotate them because he has a the man what more do these what do they say
what do the Israel's they work, live, and survive? What do these spaces say? What do you see in the spaces? And so, art of um, recreate self care to play the community around us and connect with help. to everyone that much for this fascinating question. So we will from all of these presentations of the owner of objects resurfacing in different contexts. And the question of we should stories to to today. But like this discussion because he soon just asked question um, what in fact in displaying in a, a, a dialogue Um, very no and in we got a represent smooth the cooperate eggs uh but mostly check the I work with uh, colleagues in Taiwan or what is that in this con art. This we were dealing with more history of knowledge collective for um, and I think the interest is that we can also have these kind of uh, animals connecting. We have presentation of so many different types of 